वेलकम टू भूटान ई लर्निंग प्रोजेक्ट की स्टेज फाइव आई सीता माया कोइराला ज्योग्राफी टीचर फ्रॉम केलकी हायर सेकेंडरी स्कूल वुड लाइक टू टेक यू टू द टॉपिक रॉक्स लेट अस शेयर लर्न एंड ग्रो टुगेदर टॉपिक्स टू बी कवर टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिफाइन व्हाट इज रॉक्स क्लासीफाई द रॉक्स द वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ रॉक्स वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस ऑन द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स एंड importance of each types of rocks and the rock cycle now look at the question there on the board what is rock rocks are the hard solid substances made up of minerals which are found on the surface as well as below the surface on the basis of their formation rocks are classified into three types number 1 igneous rocks look at the picture number 2 sedimentary rocks do you see the layers on this picture the third one we have metamorphic rocks so on the basis of formation rocks are of three types igneous sedimentary and metamorphic rocks now let us move little deeper to the lesson we are going to classify the igneous rocks into various types now look at only igneous rocks the word igneous has been derived from greek word ignis which means fire so igneous rocks are formed by solidification of molten magma below the surface and lava on the surface the word solidification here means cooling as simple as that igneous rocks are also called as primary rocks because they are first form on the surface by solidification of molten lava they are also called as parent rock because they are the source for other two rocks or other two rocks are formed from the igneous rocks in simple in all and all we can say that igneous rocks are also called as fiery rock now let us move little deeper igneous rocks are classified into extrusive igneous rocks and intrusive igneous rocks extrusive which means the rocks are formed on the surface by solidification of molten lava intrusive igneous rocks are those which are formed below the surface due to solidification of molten magma they are further classified into two types plutonic and hyperbasal rocks let us come to plutonic rocks these rocks are formed by solidification of molten magma with the greater depth or depth inside the earth surface whereas Hyperbasal rocks are also formed inside the earth surface by solidification of molten magma but it is on the joints and cracks of the rocks if solidification is in a vertical manner it is called as dike if it is in a horizontal manner it is called as sill so this is the brief classification of igneous rocks move to understand the characteristics of igneous rocks igneous rocks are very hard they are massive and they are very compact this is the first characteristics of igneous rocks they do not have layers which means you don't see layers on the igneous rocks that's why they are free from fossils they do not have pores so they are pervious in nature which means water cannot pass through igneous rocks if you look at the color of the igneous rocks it is black that is one physical identity of igneous rocks they cannot be easily weathered they are very compact very hard that's why they cannot be easily weathered the last point to be noted my dear students they are very rich in minerals which means they contain lots of minerals 
economic importance of igneous rocks. If you look at the picture there on the board, do you see the precious gem there in the picture? So, igneous rocks have great economic value because it contains lots of precious minerals like gold, diamond, platinum, lead, zinc, etc. That's why it has great economic importance. Igneous rocks like granite, basalt are used as a building material because they are very strong. If I share you another economic importance, basalt is also the source of black soil which is called as ragur in India, which is very good for cotton cultivation. So these are some of the economic importance of igneous rocks. When I say sedimentary rocks, what comes in your mind, my dear students? The broken pieces of rocks, which is called as sediments. So sedimentary rocks are formed by deposition of sediment in layers or layer by layers. That's why they are called as stratified rocks. The word stratified here means layer by layer. So from here itself, we must know that sedimentary rocks are formed by deposition of sediments in layers. Now let us move the classification of sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks are classified into two in general. Number one, organic sedimentary rocks. These rocks are formed by deposition of bones and skeletons of animals, which means the dead remains of animals. Inorganic sedimentary rocks are formed by deposition of sediments from the rock itself, like sand and clay. Based on their source, organic sedimentary rocks are classified into two. Number one, calcareous rocks. These calcareous rocks contain calcium. That's why they are called as calcareous rocks. In other side, we have carbonaceous rocks. Have you seen coal, my dear? The charcoal coal, have you seen? That is another example of carbonaceous rocks. So carbonaceous rocks are formed by deposition of carbon sediments. So these are the organic sedimentary rocks, calcareous and carbonaceous. Now inorganic sedimentary rocks are of two types. Number one is arenaceous. The word arenaceous is being derived from Greek word arena, which means sand. So when sandstone is formed, that is the example of arenaceous rocks. Likewise, we have another sedimentary rocks, which is called as argillaceous sedimentary rocks. The word argil means clay. So when rocks are formed by deposition of clay sediments, it is called as argillaceous rocks. Now we will move with the characteristics of sedimentary rocks. The first and the foremost is sedimentary rocks are formed in layers or strata, which means they have layers. Sedimentary rocks can hold the fossils in it because they have layers. And another simple characteristic, sedimentary rock has pores. Pores here means the holes, so that water can pass through it. Last characteristics, sedimentary rocks can be easily weathered, which means sedimentary rocks can be broken into smaller pieces easily. Now to move on to the next topic, we are going to discuss about the economic importance of sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks are the source of fossil fuel. Do you know what are the fossil fuels? The crude oil, like petroleum, diesel, kerosene, when it is in crude form. That's why it has great economic importance. They are also the source of rich soil. Why? Because sedimentary rocks 
can be broken into smaller pieces quickly or easily by any agents of weathering like wind, water, glacier, river, so on and so forth. And finally, organic sedimentary rocks are used as the building material. So these are the economic importance of sedimentary rocks. Third type of rock that is metamorphic rocks. This word metamorphic has been derived from Greek word meta and morphic. Meta means change, morphic means form. When igneous and sedimentary rocks change their original form into a new one with the influence of temperature and high pressure, it is called as metamorphism. In simple, I can say that metamorphism is a process of change of igneous and sedimentary rocks into metamorphic rock with the influence of high pressure and temperature. So that is called as metamorphism. There are four types of metamorphism or there are four ways how igneous and sedimentary rocks change into metamorphic rocks. Number one, dynamic metamorphism. The word dynamic here means the pressure. So when igneous and sedimentary rocks change into metamorphic rocks, when it is influenced by pressure, it is called as dynamic metamorphism, followed by thermal metamorphism. In the same way, when igneous and sedimentary rocks are influenced by high temperature, then it change or they change into metamorphic. This process is called as thermal metamorphism. Now the third type of metamorphism is regional metamorphism. When there is change of igneous and sedimentary rocks into metamorphic over a vast area that is under the surface of the earth, that is called as regional metamorphism. Now the final one, contact metamorphism. When molten magma inside the earth's surface come in contact with the rock, that's again we are talking about the heat, they change into metamorphic rocks, which is again inside the earth's surface. That is called as contact metamorphism. Now let us move and look at the characteristics of metamorphic rocks. Number one, metamorphic rocks are very, very hard in nature. Number two, they have banded structure. Do you know what is banded means? It is very tight, closed structure. And they have interlocking crystals. So these three are the characteristics of metamorphic rocks. Now let us move to see the economic importance of metamorphic rocks. Knees and marble are used for building purpose. Quartzites are used for making glasses. Slates are used for roofing. Finally, graphites are used for making pencils or manufacturing pencils. All in all, most of the metamorphic rocks are used for building purposes. That's why it has great economic importance. Now we are heading towards the final topic for the day, my dear students, rock cycle. Now let me say what is rock cycle? The cyclic manner of formation of rocks from one to another is called as rock cycle. It was there once upon a time, it is there today and it is going to be in future. This process is going to continue for a long, long period of time. That's why it is called as cycle, rock cycle. Now look at the diagram here on the board. First, the igneous rocks are formed due to solidification of molten material, that is magma below the surface lava on the surface. 
So that is the first step. Once igneous rocks are exposed on the surface, they break into smaller pieces by the different agents of weathering and erosion. And those broken pieces of rocks or sediments are transported by the agents of weathering to different place and they get settled down by layers. That's why there is formation of sedimentary rocks. So when sedimentary rocks undergo with the high pressure and temperature, that is the heat, then what happens? Metamorphic rocks are formed. That is, there is no end again. When metamorphic rocks are melted again by the heat, that is called as fusion, it turned into molten magma and when that solidifies again there is formation of igneous rocks. Then when igneous rocks recrystallize, the word recrystallize here means again solidify, then with the help of again temperature and pressure there is formation of metamorphic rocks. When metamorphic rocks on the surface are broken into pieces by agents of weathering and erosion, again there is formation of sedimentary rocks. So finally, when sedimentary rocks are buried below the surface of the earth, maybe due to natural hazards like earthquake, these rocks will melt due to the high pressure and temperature. So it forms molten magma once more and when it solidify again there is formation of igneous rocks. So from here we can say that there is formation of rocks from one rock to another by using the different processes like recrystallization, fusion, weathering and erosion, heat and pressure. These are some of the agents which helps in the formation of rocks from one to another. So this process is called as rock cycle. Now we are coming towards the end of our lesson. Let us recapitulate the main topic once more. Today we have discussed about the definition of rock. Please simply remember that rocks are the solid hard substances formed by combination of minerals or sometimes with the single minerals and they are found on the surface as well as below the surface. After that, we have discussed about the types of rocks. So if I repeat, we have discussed so many different types, but I will just share the main general classification that is igneous rocks, sedimentary rocks and metamorphic rocks. After that, we have discussed about the economic importance of each rock and characteristics of each rock. And finally, we have learned how rocks are formed through the diagram of rock cycle. I have some questions for you all. The first question is, explain the formation of igneous rocks. The second question, how do you all use sedimentary rocks in your day-to-day -day life? Question number three, write down importance of metamorphic rocks. Question number four, most of the building materials are derived from different types of rocks. Do you agree? Provide two valid points to support the given statement. That's all for the day. Thank you so much for attending my lesson and see you all in next lesson. Thank you.